Welcome to Women in Leadership. My name is Reagan Jackson and I'm the Program Director for Young Women Empowered. We are a Seattle-based nonprofit and our mission is to cultivate the power of diverse young women to be creative leaders and courageous change makers, which we do through a series of transformative programs within an intergenerational and collaborative community of belonging. So dealing with COVID-19 has been an unprecedented challenge. So the purpose of this series is to highlight some women in our community who are showing us what leadership can look like in the face of adversity. So here with me today is Sabrina Roach. Welcome. Hey, hello. <laughs> Sabrina is the program director for the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. She brings more than two decades of experience organizing for a media and technology ecosystem that serves us all. Uh, this has included initiating and coordinating a Washington State COVID-19 internet access crisis team after introducing a 2020 Washington State digital equity access. Welcome. Thank you, Reagan. And thanks for being in my life and part of my community media work and part of my friendship circle for like a decade at least. Oh my gosh, has it been that long? Yes, it has. <laughs> Well, tell us a bit about how COVID-19 has impacted your life personally and professionally. I would say that as March progressed, um, folks in the digital equity communities around the country started to notice articles talking about the digital divides. Mm -hmm. And um, and we, we all started really noticing as schools closed, how these big issues were coming up um, around um, if X percentage of students in a class didn't have access to the internet or devices, they, they couldn't participate and so nobody could do online learning and progress forward in their educations. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that universities and community technical colleges like they they were able to handle um, connectivity needs for their students for the most part but K through 12 was really significant um, and um, it, it was so hard to see such big gaps in who has access to the internet um, when they're taken away from the you know the school building um i remember a very early conversation um uh with this amazing uh woman who works for uh the macaw tribe and um they're up on the the you know the part of washington state that like tips into the water mm -hmm. um into the ocean up up here uh, on nia bay and um they have um tribal owned fiber internet connections that go only to the the tribal office and the school so when the youth were sent home like they only had you know what we call degrading copper just like copper wires like really old school internet technology <laughs> that that falls kind of apart like that's what a lot of folks had to their homes so that's all that they have but in talking with um the staff member, like she, she was talking about like how for months she's been researching how to build a Wi-Fi mesh network on top of the tribal fiber. And that would then uh, be kind of like a field of dandelions that have gone to seed. Can you can just imagine that puffiness everywhere? So like a Wi-Fi cloud around the houses. Mm -hmm. um, and now they have an opportunity to, to, to to go for that, and they have to go for that because what um, what a corporation supplied them was insufficient for those mm -hmm. those houses, and so I'm seeing these pockets of people around the country who they they know they know what to do, they know what their communities need, and now there's more political will and more funding being freed up to get that done. And um, it, it's just pretty wild to see these different opportunities for folks to step into their leadership and to meet each other and help each other get these things done. 
people are really open to collaborating. That gives me a lot of hope. That's amazing. And, and so, interesting though, too, to think about like how communities, how, how communities are, are framing what their needs are during this time. Um, well, what, what do you feel like you've been able to accomplish so far? And what, what are your goals around systemic change during this time? It's a time to, to really work with folks um, across differences. I feel strongly across differences um, on, on some things that serve everyone. I mean, everyone having access to education serves everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone having access to good internet and devices serves everyone because the more people can participate in the political process and the economy, all these things, and also share joy with each other through entertainment and culture and goodness. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's a time for me to think very structurally and um, some folks like Representative Mia Gregerson have um, invited me into doing this work with her and her staff um, and being able to um, educate me a little bit of, at a time about kind of the overwhelming structure of the state government. <laughs> There's so much to that. <laughs> and I feel like I know city and county governments, okay, but like state governments, um, but she's been, she has a track record of supporting community folks in doing, um, uh, you know, just grassroots organizing projects, um, and making, um, making just like the state that can seem like so much like more accessible and the people who work within it more reachable. Um, so I feel that I'm working <laughs> to understand things really quickly mm -hmm. and working with folks who have access to power to convene conversations. And, and really Representative Gregerson has helped like just speed up those conversations that I don't think I would have the power maybe to convene just by myself or it would take, um, a, a lot of rallies or something to get there, you know? <laughs> Have to paint some signs, like go yeah. stand some places on some stairs, maybe. But um, uh, now that I have that insight from working on the, the Washington State Digital Equity Act with her and her staff, um, and understanding the state a little bit better, I understand how a few other states work, and I just got this job with the National Digital Inclusion Alliance an organization I've been working with, you know, like as a volunteer, just in that community of people for like five years. But um, that means that I have trusted relationships that I can bring to the table. And it means that I'm a little bit more comfortable in my analysis. Um, that's taken me a lot of time to come into that and to not second guess myself all the time or apologize for even being in the room. Wow. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of an answer there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I just kind of went on <laughs> no, also I, I, about COVID and how it impacts the person personally. Like when you're working 12 hour days doing intense things and not sleeping well, you know, it just gets a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> well, I, it's a very steep learning curve for sure. Um, but some things that, that I'm pulling out of your answer, especially are, are around access and around amplification um, and just other, other folks stepping in to say, hey, here's a person who's, who's been doing this work a really long time and who has this skill, this skill set and uh, we need to apply it to the, the problems. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really appreciated, appreciating that that's working out um, and, and, and providing you with broader access now that this moment is, has leveraged um, that access point for you. And uh, I, I've i always considered you to be uh, a leader in our community, but I'm wondering how you self-identify. Do you self-identify as a leader? And then also in what ways you feel like COVID-19 has impacted your, your leadership style? 
um, I, I remember getting involved in um, a local arts leadership um, program like a decade ago. And we were emerging arts leaders <laughs> trying to connect with each other and convene events to talk about issues we felt were important, like space and gentrification and the arts and whatnot. Um, I remember uh, not going to those meetings for like a year because it said arts leader mm -hmm. uh, in the title. And I was like, well, that's not me. Um, <laughs> but I was a development director at the time at a community radio station, KBCS. And there's a way in which you can look at community media centers as like arts nonprofits, <laughs> which would, would have made me an arts administrator and therefore an emerging arts leader. But I didn't see myself in that language. And so for a while, like, we even changed the name of the group <laughs> to Arts Leadership Lab. <laughs> and now it's the Seattle um, SALT, Seattle Arts Leadership Team. But um, it's, it's funny. Uh, I mean, leadership's just a word. You know, leader's just a word sometimes. And sometimes that can seem like a really big deal that you want to step away from. Um, my, my leadership style is more from the back of the room, like herding cats. And I'm very concerned that we bring more people along as we all move forward. Um, and so th that's just like how I'm most comfortable leading. I'm not super comfortable giving a speech at the front of a room. Um, maybe I would like facilitate a panel or moderate a panel. That's comfortable for me, but it takes me a lot more to put my ideas forward in that way. Um, but in a time of crisis, there's a lot of stand up and get going. Like you just, in time of crisis, the, um, at, you know, the, the challenges become sharper and um, who else is gonna do it in that moment? Um, I do think that there's enough time, even in this, rushed time for us to identify and look out for folks um, and their leadership development as well. Like, so we can do this together more. So there's more of us at the table um, when it's not a crisis, something like that, you know? Um, there's nothing like a campaign to create more entry points for more folks to get involved mm -hmm. and to, to feel invested. And I think that that's, that's an important component here that people, educate themselves, get to know the issues at hand and, and get going with it. Well, that's a, a perfect segue to our last question, which is how can the community support you in your work and in this work, this important work of digital inclusion? Um, I think that there's, um, there's something to raising awareness just about these dynamics and giving them language and talking about the things that are working, because there's certainly a lot of um, stories about gaps of, you know, digital divide gaps. Um, and right now those stories are like, there are only X thousand of um, like laptops available or hotspot devices around the country. Um, uh, and this school district and that school district and these big cities and these big companies have made these big donations um, of computers to get youth computers. Um, but when those devices have um, run out around the country, I would say in an, maybe the next month and a half, what kind of work can we all do to find more devices places and get them where they need to go? Um, I've noticed that there's a really big absence of um, like social work support for digital inclusion. So like a case manager who helps folks get online who have just no access to a device and an internet connection or a mobile phone. Um, so as we figure out how to do that around the country, I think we can all do that in informal ways as well looking out for each other, um, just like noticing who maybe doesn't have access to the internet, um, and then being creative about how we get them information and check on them. So 
I don't have anything super clear yet <laughs> for you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that, that feels clear. Around the state, you can look forward to um, schools and libraries opening up their Wi-Fi access and pointing it at the parking lots. So people can do drive up Wi-Fi. So that's coming. Um, and getting the word out about that is going to be important. Um, it, it's interesting the kinds of initiatives that we're all talking about. Um, it's a combination of big things that only the state can do, and then like more complicated things that the state can help with, and then grassroots things that people can do. That's awesome. It's a bunch. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for talking with us today. Thank you, Reagan.